My favourite way to fold it before putting it in is because I feel like that may be why I'm getting leakage. But I do find that the ones that are a, that have a bit more resistance are better for me than the ones that are super, super flexible. Hi everyone, how are you? I hope you are doing well. Thank you for clicking on this video. This is a video all about menstrual cups. I just want to start this video by saying that I have not yet mastered the menstrual cup. Um, I'm still very much on my journey to learning how to use these little things. But the reason I'm making this video now, despite that, is, I don't know about you, let me know if you feel the same about this type of thing, but if I'm trying to learn something new and I watch a tutorial on it and the person who I'm watching is like, all you have to do is this. So like say in the case of a menstrual cup, there's loads of videos about menstrual cups out there and it's like, you know, you just pop it in, you go about your day and there's no leaks and all that kind of stuff. It makes me feel worse about myself because, I've, because I'm finding it difficult. So when there's tutorials out there that make it sound really easy but I'm still struggling, it makes me feel bad about myself. So I didn't want to put out a video like that, one because I would be completely lying because I'm not at that point yet, and two because I just think, well I'm hoping that maybe this is a little bit more relatable, I'm kind of halfway there I feel like, so a little bit relatable but I still feel like I can bring enough value that it's helpful to you. So I hope that is what you get from this video. I'm gonna be covering a few things. I'm gonna be covering like why, why menstrual cups? Why I personally wanna use a menstrual cup, why I feel like other people should use menstrual cups, um, my journey with menstrual cups so far, how size really does matter, um, different brands, different shapes, different textures, and also, at the end, I'm gonna be answering some of the questions that you guys asked me on Instagram, so a little Q&A at the end. So, menstrual cups, let's get into it. So I have tried menstrual cups from three different brands. I have tried Moon Cup, I have tried BU, and I have tried Intamina. So, reasons why I think the menstrual cups are a amazing option for your period if you manage to get the hang of it, they are gonna save you money. They are gonna save the environment and they are gonna save your vagina. They're gonna save you money because you can buy one menstrual cup and that is all, if you get the hang of it, then that is all you need for, for a few years time. You can use these for, uh, for years. Um, whereas if you don't use this, then you're gonna be buying tampons and pads every month and that adds up. It's gonna be saving the environment because according to the Moon Cup website, which is where this menstrual cup comes from, we, each one of us uses around 11,000 disposable sanitary products, which end up in the sea or landfill. And if you get a menstrual cup, there's no waste because you've got this one thing which you're gonna keep, you don't need to dispose of, and so nothing is gonna end up in the sea or in landfill. Also a lot of menstrual cup companies are part of schemes and environmental causes where they donate and they help rebuild parts of the environment and you know, just good causes that are helping preserve and restore the planet. Um, do your own research into those though because each brand is different. Some brands may be part of schemes like that, some may not, um, so pick and choose who you buy from. And they are better for your body because our vaginas go through a lot, so I feel like we need to look after them and menstrual cups I feel like are a lot better. Some things that I learned which recently which just really upsets me is that if you use a tampon, a traditional tampon, then it leaves fibres behind inside your vagina which can be drying, it has chemicals in, which is obviously bad for you and your pH, and the thought of just fibers left up inside of my, <sighs> yeah. Um, you're not gonna get any fibers or anything, in, or anything left behind with menstrual cups. Also, traditional pads and tampons, they are pumped with bleach to make them look better, they are pumped with fragrance, which you know, it is nice, it is pleasant to wear a pad, you pull your pants down to change your pad, or you pull your pants down to go to the toilet and you have a nice scent, but it's really unnecessary. Like, that is so unnecessary. We don't need to smell of flowers or to smell of sweets. Like, it's just really, it's just, come on, we don't need that. So yeah, fragrance, bleach, chemicals is what these traditional 
pads and tampons are full of and we're putting that in our most intimate area so for me that is just a no-go so i am making the transition to menstrual cups and i say transition because it's not just one day i decided to use a menstrual cup and then that's all i'm ever going to use because it is a journey on how to actually make these things work Okay, so a little bit about my journey and my experience with menstrual cups so far. I think I've tried menstrual cups for maybe four or five periods now, not consecutive ones either. Like I have kind of broken it up a little bit, but I am going to try and be try and use them for consecutive periods from now until I get the hang of it. The first time I used it, I really struggled to get it in and out. It's even now like i can get it in and out and it's not hard now but it's still not the best experience but now i'm confident with taking it in and out but at first on my first period i was just in a complete mess and i was just like how the hell does this big thing fit in my vagina but then you know i kind of thought abby you've definitely had bigger <laughs> I'm cutting that out. Um, yeah, I thought, you know, how is this gonna fit inside of my vagina? But but our vaginas are designed and made to have bigger things in and out of them. Like we push a, a baby out of our vaginas for God's sake. So this can go in. <laughs> Plus, you don't just shove it in like this. There are ways that you fold it up so that it's nice and small so that you can pop it in. The first, the first time I used a menstrual cup, I wore a pad as well, which I would advise that you guys do for your first time as well, because I clearly didn't put it in right, so I was bleeding as if I didn't have anything in, like the blood was coming out of me. <laughs> I highly recommend on your first few tries that you do still use a pad, but now I'm at the point where some days I will have no leakage, but then the next day I might leak, but it will just be the tiniest little bit. It won't be like I'm bleeding, it will just be a tiny little bit has got round the menstrual cup somehow. So that's where I'm at right now and it's really hit and miss and I haven't figured out what I'm doing wrong. So that's what I'm finding frustrating at the moment because I don't know what I'm doing wrong. So right now I'm at the phase of experimenting with different brands, experimenting with different sizes, different textures. Okay, so let's talk about inserting these things and actually getting these things inside of you. <laughs> There are different ways to fold the menstrual cup to get it inside of you and some people prefer different ways. So one way to do it is to literally just fold it like, squeeze it like that and then fold it over. So then it looks like this. I personally don't like doing it like that because I feel like that is still quite big and I find that it doesn't open out as well. My favorite way to fold it before putting it in is by tucking in one edge like that and then pinching it. So then it kind of looks like that from the side and the top of it is nice and small so it's easier to get in. I also find that folding it in this way makes, makes it easier to open up because there's kind of more force behind it opening up so it pops up and opens up inside of you. Another way that I've recently been experimenting with is by, again, squeezing it like this, but instead of folding it directly in half, you kind of fold it on a diagonal. So then again, the top of it is a nice and small, so it's easier to initially get in. And then when you let go of it, it kind of pops open with a bit more force. So that's what I'm going to be experimenting with next. I've used this technique, I've used this technique a few times now, um, but I, again, I've not quite got the hang of getting it in the right position. So next I'm going to experiment with this one to see if I can get it in the right position to get no leakage using it this way. It's not actually that messy pulling it out at the end of the day. As long as you get a good grip on the bottom, when you pull it out, it's not actually as messy as what I thought it was going to be. Because you pull it out, you keep it upright, it will be full of blood and then you just tip it into the toilet and then you can take it over to the sink, rinse it out and then you can pop it back in. One thing I have learned is that size really does matter. All of the ones that I have are different sizes. The one from Moon Cup in the middle here is my smallest one. This is the one that I feel the most comfortable with for a few reasons. Initially, I thought that if it was bigger, then it would be less likely to have leaks. 
because it's gonna be opening and pressing more against your walls, so less likely to leak. But that is not, but that theory is completely wrong. This one is bigger than, this one from BU is bigger than my Moon Cup. And I find I was getting more leakage with this one than I was with my Moon Cup. I was getting more leakage with the bigger one. And I feel like that may be because it's not opening up properly. So if you're trying to put a big menstrual cup into a small, <laughs> into a small hole, <laughs> then it's, this is all theory by the way, but it's harder for it to actually open up. So it could be sitting like this inside of the vagina, which is what I feel potentially was happening with me. It wasn't popping up open like this. Whereas one that is slightly smaller is gonna be easier to open up. So I do think that it's gonna take a couple of different menstrual cups for you to find the one that is perfect for you because there's not really any way of knowing until you actually try it out. On these websites, they do have um, little surveys and quizzes to help you find the one that would best suit you. Um, but I have found those quizzes aren't 100% accurate. So you may end up buying a couple, but it will be worth it when you find the one that is right for you in the end. Also, you can see that they differ quite a lot in length. This moon cup was actually longer than this when it first came. The stem was longer and I actually snipped off some of the end because I was finding that the stem was actually poking out and it was uncomfortable. So I snipped the end off so that it was more comfortable when it was inside of me and it wasn't like digging in or poking out at all. So again, I find that the shorter length and the smaller circumference are the ones that fit me the best, but I am still getting leakage, so I could be wrong. I am still gonna experiment with these again now that I feel like I've mastered getting it in. So now it's a case of experimenting with the different sizes. Another thing that I have found differs a lot between moon cups and that I think are quite and that I think is quite important is um I don't know what you would call this like the stiffness of it I guess the moon cup is quite stiff it has a lot of resistance like it's not easy to squeeze it whereas one like this is really whereas the one from Intamina is really squishy I can almost squish this one into a ball whereas this one I can't squish and fold up that small um, but I do find that the ones that are a, that have a bit more resistance are better for me than the ones that are super, super flexible. Reason being is that it's gonna be pushing against my, pushing against the walls more. So then I feel like it's pressed against the walls more, which means that it's less likely to have leakage around the edge. I hope that makes sense. So that's kind of my experience and what I've learned so far. I think I've covered everything. I will do a follow-up video if I get questions and comments that I feel like I need to do a follow-up. And I will just gen generally do a follow-up when I feel like I've made progress anyway. The thing that I need to practice now is getting in the position right like inside my vagina. Like I need to figure out how high or how low to put it because I feel like that may be why I'm getting leakage. Um, so once I figured that out, then I am good to go. I am so determined to make this work. I am so determined to get menstrual cups to work because the thought of having a period where all I use is one of these and that's it and nothing else. That is a dream, that sounds like an absolute dream to me. So I am really determined to make this work. So I'm gonna try these again over the next few periods. Um, because yeah, I really do wanna make menstrual cups work for me. A lot of you have asked me questions about menstrual cups on Instagram, so I'm gonna go through some of those now. Okay, so let's get into some questions. Is it one cup you use and it keep washing it? Yes, you do only need one cup, you can wash it and then pop it back in and then at the end of the period you boil it, um, yeah. But I think once I decide which one is best for me, I may even try some more brands, then I think I would actually have two, just because I think it will be handy um, and slightly more hygienic. So if you did feel like you want to boil it after each day or every other day, rather than at the end of the period, then you can do that while still having another one inside, if you know what I mean. So I think having two could be handy, but you don't need two. That's kind of for extra convenience. You can just live with the one and continue on with one. Is there a special cleaning product for it? Nobody wants a sensitive kitty. <laughs> True. A lot of the brands do offer a cleaning product as well. The BU 
menstrual cup that I have, they did send me a cleaning product with it as well, which is safe. It won't throw off your pH balance. It is safe for you to wash this and then put it back in. Make sure that everything is rinsed off of it. But yes, a lot of the brands do provide a cleaning product for the menstrual cup. Um, how long can you leave it in for? Um, I've had a little look across the websites of the menstrual cups that I have and they do slightly differ, but basically it seems to be between eight and 12 hours that they say is safe for you to leave it in. Um, but that is obviously dependent on your flow, dependent on the size of the menstrual cup that you have and the amount of blood that you produce, which is very different between people. So it may be different on each day for you as well. So say if you're heaviest on day one and two, then you may need to change it after six hours, but then the following day you may be able to leave it in between eight to 10 hours. I personally wouldn't leave it in for any more than eight to 10 hours at a time without emptying it and reinserting it. Um, but it seems like you can leave it in up to 12 based on the information online. What are the cups made from? Is it plastic and is it harmful or is it okay for your insides? So menstrual cups, um, again, across the websites of the menstrual cups that I own, um, they are all made from 100% medical grade silicone, which means that they are safe for inside of your body. There's no, there's no plastic that can be there's no plastic with chemicals that can be absorbed into your body and into your bloodstream. It's made from silicone, which is medical grade silicone, which is safe for your body. Do you have to take extra care to make sure it stays in, for example, when sitting down or walking or exercising? Um, no. If you've used tampons before, it basically feels the same as a tampon. Once it's in and it's in the right position, you cannot feel it um, and it shouldn't move, like it won't just come out by itself. Um, with menstrual cups, when it opens, it kind of causes a vacuum, which means that there's a little bit of suction. So it's highly unlikely that it's just going to come out by itself. Um, so I personally haven't found that I have to take any extra care. I just live my life as if I have a tampon in or as if I'm not on my period when I have a menstrual cup in. Can it cause a suction effect and possibly hurt your cervix or something else if you take it out wrong? Um... I mean, I don't know the answer to this for sure, but I'm gonna say it's unlikely because it's not actually a suction machine. You know, it's just kind of popped open. Um, it, it does say that it causes a vacuum, but it has holes. They all have holes around the edge, which means that you can release the suction. So as soon as you pinch the bottom, it pushes out air and it will release the suction so that you can pull it out without it actually sucking out your cervix and I kind of push it out when I take it out I kind of push it out it's almost like I'm giving birth to it <laughs> like I kind of I pinch the bottom and then I gently push so then it kind of comes out almost by itself but without too much suction um someone said any leakage yes unfortunately I still am getting leakage and I think it's normal for you to get leakage for the first few times of trying it. The frustrating thing about trying to get the hang of menstrual cups is that you only have a period once a month, so it's not something that you can try over and over again. You have to experiment, then you have to wait a month, then you can experiment again and then wait a month. So it is quite frustrating, but at the moment I am still getting leakage. Um, but on my next period, I'm just gonna try a different method, different, you know, just try different things. Um, and hopefully eventually I will get rid of the leakage. But if you are experiencing leakage and it's your first few tries, don't feel disheartened because I'm at that stage too. Um, so yeah guys, I think that's all I have for you for now. I'm sure people are gonna have questions. If you do, please drop them in the comment section below. If you don't feel comfortable leaving a public comment, then please do feel, please do feel free to DM me on Instagram. Um, but it, I think it, but it would be super helpful, I think, to drop your questions in the comments below because it will help other people as well because people can answer other people's questions, I'll answer people's questions, and you know, you can get a little discussion going. Um, but yes, I if you would like me to do a follow-up video on this when I feel like I've mastered the menstrual cup and if I learn anything else, please give this video a thumbs up to let me know that you like this type of content. And yeah, guys, I hope you found it help. I hope you found this somewhat helpful. Let me know your experiences with menstrual cups in the comments as well. Have you had any horror stories? Have you had any success stories? What is your favorite brand? Things like that. Um, yeah, thanks for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye.